Greetings, friends. It's Pat at Dancing Moon Travel coming to you with the latest episode of Let's Talk Travel. Uh, we're so glad you're out there. We appreciate our regulars who, who tune in on uh, uh, frequently. And uh, don't, don't forget, as usual, we're going to have a great giveaway toward the end. So you want to hang in there with us. We have a drawing every week for some fabulous travel related merchandise. And I love what we've got uh, on our giveaway this week. So stay tuned. And if you're watching uh, on an instant replay and picked us up on YouTube or otherwise, we are so glad you're out there as well. Uh, and, and I'm really excited this evening to be welcoming our special guest. Uh, I've looked back on our history, and as near as I can tell, I can't hardly believe this, but we have never featured this particular provider on our show. Uh, I, I don't know how I can explain that oversight, but we're, we're fixing that now. And I am so happy to rectify that. And I am welcoming Lionel Garcia from Azamara Cruise Lines this evening. Welcome, Lionel. We're so glad to have you here. I know you've been very busy and so appreciate you working us in. Oh, my, my pleasure, Pat. Thank you for having me here as well. It's 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 an honor and a pleasure. Well, we're, we're so glad you're here. And I always like to start out just letting our listeners get acquainted a little bit with you. And, and if you could start, just give us a quick overview of your background, how you found your way into the cruise industry, and it uh, ended up at Azamara. Sure, of course. So uh, believe it or not, it was uh, April 22nd. So just last month, I celebrated 20 years in the business. And uh, I started my career with Boyle Caribbean answering phones for the call center. And, and you were obviously about four years old at the time, right? <laughs> I was I was nineteen, so yeah, I was I was pretty young. I was right out of pretty right out of high school, still um, going to school, going to college down in South Florida, and um, and then I learned that there was well, my whole intent to go there was to work in PR um, and and to travel the world. That was my intent for starting at the cruise line. I had a, uh, a, a desire to travel. I had really not traveled too much as a child, so I really wanted to have the company pay me to travel. As I started working, I learned that there was a position where I get to work with travel professionals like you, Pat, and, and represent the company through that, and, uh, and I would have my own territory. And, and in my mind, I said, well, one day when I grow up, you know, I'll have that job. And so sure enough, uh, before I grew up at 23, so shortly after uh, starting at as a at Royal Caribbean, they sent me to Texas to represent them in Texas, and I covered all of Texas except for Houston and Dallas. Spent some time there, about just about 10 years, and then moved back. Met my wife, started a family, and we moved. Uh, I moved them and myself back to Florida, where I've had the pleasure now of representing Azamar for the last seven years exclusively just them in uh, in the state of Florida. And I, I love it. It's been fantastic. The brand is just such a unique brand, which I know we'll get into. But yes, yeah, so that's the, uh, the cliff note version of my career. I love that. I mean, and, and I am so envious of those of you who started early. I, I was, a, I got into travel very late uh, and, and uh, just, I mean, it was really an accidental stumb conversation that happened. And, and so here I am years later, but, but uh, I, so that's the one regret I had that I didn't get into the travel industry. Uh, it's a great career. Young people, if you're listening out there, explore the opportunities available in the travel industry. It is a fabulous place to plug in and get opportunities to see the world. So you had a great segue uh, into our next topic of conversation, which uh, let's talk a bit about Azamara. I, I, I suspect we have a number of listeners who aren't too familiar with this particular brand and what what is the, the experience like with Azamara and what differentiates you in the industry? No, I love that question, Pat. I, I've had the privilege, like I mentioned, of working with the brand for seven years, and I've, I've had to come up with a very clear way to distinguish ourselves from other brands. Because at the end of the day, all the cruise, ship, all the cruise lines have cruise ships, and all the cruise ships go to wonderful places. So why is Azamara unique? And, uh, and I've come up with a really unique way to describe Azamara. And I say that Azamara is a land vacation company that uses floating hotels. 
I love it. <laughs> I and, love it. And the reason why I say that is that 80% of the time that a guest is with Azamara on a voyage, they will be in port. That means that more than half of their stops have a late night departure of 8 p.m. or later, or have an overnight departure, which means the vessel spends the night in port. And so that means that a guest can go ashore and have dinner, go ashore and watch a show, go ashore and have a nightcap, and then come back to the ship when they want to. Some of our guests even decide to spend the night off the ship in a hotel. For example, in Bordeaux, we spend three days, two nights, and we, we dock right on the Garonne. Uh, in the, within 15 minutes of center of town, or actually right in the center of town. And some of our guests will spend a night or two in a chateau in saint Emilion because they can. And the ship waits for them because the ship is going to be there for three days and two nights. So it is it's a very unique way of cruising. In addition to the fact that we operate four identical vessels, each carrying 700 or fewer guests, and we have 400 crew to serve the needs of our guests while they're sailing with us. So that is the difference maker, in my opinion, of Azamar. I love that. And, and Lionel, I found this. I, I want to play this for our guests. Yeah. I found this little video here uh, that I, I poached off of your YouTube channel uh, just to whet the appetites. Okay. Watch this. Push beyond the obvious and perspective is open to change. When you see parts unknown in ports less known, unwind. Stay the night and just slow down. Wander, but never wonder what a place is really like. The difference is night and day. Azamara, change the way you see. I just love that video. So looking at that uh, and, and what you said, uh, in case our there's any doubt who would you say is, is the ideal client for an Azamara cruise experience so uh, can you provide any clues to help people identify themselves yes of course most <laughs> definitely so um, for starters I love to say that we're the perfect cruise line for the non-cruiser if you've ever looked at yourself and said I don't want to go on a cruise because uh, I'm going to feel rushed or the ship is too big or I don't like to be told what to do and when to do it, then Azamara could be the perfect fit for that because our vessels are small, 700 or fewer guests. Um, we have a lot of time in port, 80% of the voyage is port time, multiple late night stays, multiple overnight stays, open seating. So there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, I also think our cruise is perfect for the very well traveled, not necessarily well cruised. Uh, a cruiser comes with certain expectations that what the cruise will provide, but very few cruise lines provide what we provide, which is all of that time in port. So I think that a, a very well-traveled, even predominantly either a river cruiser or a land vacationer can really gravitate and understand and grasp and appreciate what it is that Azamara delivers. Because for example, Pat, I, I know we're not going to cover this, but I'll mention it, is that Azamara doesn't have any casinos on their vessels. And for a cruiser, a cruise isn't a cruise without a casino. But with Azamara, the casinos aren't open because there's no time to open them as we would have to be out at sea. And with Azamara, we're not at sea very often. In some cases, not at all. And so for those reasons, that casino was always closed. So therefore, we just eliminated the casinos fleet wide and created a new space in that, in that venue that our guests love and enjoy and they can use at any time not just if we're at sea. I love that. I love that. What What would you say, is there anything, Lionel, that you consistently hear from people about something that surprised them when they sailed Azamara for the first time? What they love, and I hear all the time, is how our crew make them feel like they are home. Mm -hmm. Not only does it go from the fact that our crew say, welcome home, but it's not just the crew that everyone always sees on a voyage. I'm talking about the officers. You know, on many voyages, those officers are kind of behind the scenes. You rarely ever hear them or see them. You might see them on the formal night or on captain's night. But with Azamara, our, our captain, our hotel director, our activities director, our cruise director, they're at the pier wishing you well as you step ashore. And then when you come back, in many cases, you're going to find one of our officers there welcoming you home. And Azamara actually does something that uh, 
is very popular today on ships, but we were doing it before it became the cool thing to do. We do the Azamar fist bump. So this is our little way of also saying hello, uh, but also preventing the spread of disease or viruses on, on a ship is that we just, we do a fist bump, but we've been doing this way before COVID and it was just to, and it really was synonymous with our, with our crew. So I would say that the feedback that I've been getting all the time is how surprised they are of the connections and relationships that they build with our crew, but even more so our officers. I love that. I love that. Well, I, I'm looking at the clock. I can't believe how fast the time goes. But I, I want to turn our attention toward Africa because that is, after all, our focus for for uh, uh, the month of May. We're we're focused specifically on Africa. Now, coming up, uh, the the itinerary that I cho I chose to feature here is March 2023. I I found this amazing 21 night voyage, departing from Cape Town and traveling up the entire west coast of the African continent, ending in Lisbon. Uh, I thought this was an amazing itinerary. It just took people up the road less traveled uh, for those well traveled clients and and where they can delve into really authentic cultures and experience that they they that can be frankly hard to find in larger uh cities and you know more more metropolitan areas that that cruises tend to frequent um i i just love this now we folks there are other dates available we'll talk about that too but could, lionel could i want to take you just off of our feed if that's okay and we'll go quickly through this these ports of call i want to just show pictures as, as much as possible here because worth a thousand words. Um, so I'm just going to take you off the feed. You'll be able to hear us. Uh, and uh, uh, let me see if we can hear you. If not, we'll make a plan B here. Okay. Uh, now, Lionel, can you say something? Yeah. Yeah, not going to work. I can't hear you when you're off the feed. But we'll, we'll be showing f folks mostly here. We'll be showing images so you can see what this cruise is about. Um, starting off, here we have the itinerary as it comes up the East Coast. Lionel, what can you do? Yeah. So I, I, can, I would love to kind of guide you on, uh, on everything that we're doing. So this adventure begins in Cape Town as we set sail to Namibia's Walvis Bay where we will overnight there and give you plenty of time to dive into that German colonial past and venture inland for a bucket list worthy African safari. These first images, uh, uh, obviously we're, we're looking at Cape Town here. And uh, so just, just an incredible destination. And uh, so great, great place to start any place. And then you said, then we head over to um, Walvis Bay, and then we'll have the opportunity there for the guests can actually choose an African safari, followed by two blissful days at sea on our way to Luanda. And this is Angola's shining capital, and it's an exciting mix of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, meandering oceanside promenades, and beautifully ornate churches. I, I love the, the contrast that you see in so many of these destinations. This metropolitan city, and and, and one of the images I loved from, from your side on this is this baobab tree. This is a such a typical uh, African site that you see out when you get outside of the cities. Love that. So go on, Lionel. What's next? No worry. So then we have three days at sea, which this is unique because obviously it's a very long journey, but we have three days at sea. This is going to give your clients the opportunity to explore the boutique hotel at sea, uh, go ahead and, and treat themselves to a spa treatment, uh, dine, dine in one of our specialty restaurants, uh, maybe take in one of the shows, if not all the shows. And then at the end of those three days, they get to awaken at Ta Takurati, which is Ghana's beautiful laid back beachside resort town with an exciting urban street food scene which to me that sounds great i personally have uh not been to ghana but i would love the opportunity to try some of that local street side uh street food scene it, it's just just amazing and, and just outside of the town you 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 have excursions in each one of these places and 
so much to see yeah. and experience. Right. What's next, Lionel? Next, on to the Ivory Coast. They call it the Paris of West Africa. Abidjan, with its mix of striking architecture and open air markets and the distinct neighborhoods. They, so this is a really great place to also experience a lot of culture and see a lot of unique sights, sounds, and smells for sure. Cool. And our next stop? We continue to head over to Banjul, the Gambia, where you head to the Albert Market for an authentic taste of local life. Excellent. And so many contrasts here when you get out and about. Uh, I, I just I love that about these these itineraries that you have the modern and then you have the just as beautiful. Then then where are we going, Lionel? Right. Yeah, two more days at sea before you before you arrive to the Canary Islands with a late night stay in Gran Canaria. Gran Canaria is the third island and is under protection as a UNESCO biosphere reserve. You have lots of time to explore its many landscapes, climates, and attractions, and um, and then you head over to um that sorry that is in Tenerife and you soak in the sun at one of its many pristine beaches and or head to Tiede National Park an UNESCO World Heritage Site following a stop in Madeira Portugal home to the pit, picturesque villages and idyllic landscapes and Madeira wine don't forget the voyage will end in Lisbon, which is the oldest city in is one of the oldest cities in the world. Wow. Wow. I, and colorful. Oh man. Just just amazing. But wait, folks, that is not all. Because Lionel, <laughs> you guys not only offer this amazing itinerary, but you have a fabulous pre and post program that people folks you're going to fly over there you're going to be be going to africa for most it's a one in a lifetime uh trip that you take so you guys have incredible pre and post programs too i love you you've got two i don't this is the hardest thing how in the world do you choose this this is the the first one of the kruger park Yes, so we have two programs. We have a five with two. Both of them are actually five night pre programs. The one you're showing here is the Kruger National Park and Safari Winelands program. This is an all inclusive land program. Introduces you to two very different sides of South Africa. You explore South Africa's Kapama Game Reserve, home to more than forty mammal species, including the Big Five, and adjacent to Kruger National Park. Then. It's on to the country's wine region where you get to sip on excellent local vintages paired perfectly with gourmet meals and snacks. Through it all, you'll enjoy luxurious hotel and resort accommodations, plenty of leisure time to relax, and all throughout, all thoughtful amenities that make every day incredibly special. That is so amazing. And then you have this one, Lionel. I don't, I don't know how in the world a person can choose, but tell us about this one. <laughs> So this one is also five nights where we will travel through Zimbabwe to Botswana, where you experience one of the seven wonders of the world, Victoria Falls. This expedition also includes both dawn and evening game drives through Botswana's Chobe National Park, where there's a great chance that you'll get to see and meet one of, if not all, of the big five, the Cape Buffalo, the lion, the elephant, and leopard. Fabulous. And and you guys also offer a post in Lisbon. Well, we also, in case you don't have five nights in Cape Town, we do have a two-night city stay in Cape Town where we you can actually come in two nights early and just stay right in the city. And this is a, a great way to experience all that Cape Town has to offer. I've heard many people say that you could spend uh, four to five days in Cape Town. But then there is also, to your point, a post um, that we're doing. It's also five night. This one is a post in Marrakesh, Fez, and the charms of Morocco. So this one is going to begin in uh, in Lisbon at the end of the voyage. Wow. And, and talk about colorful, amazing places. Morocco is just, uh, I mean, exotic is just the word that pops to mind. So uh, 
couple more questions. I, I, I mean, I know that the clock keeps ticking, but uh, I, I, one of the things we just have to always talk about these days is things are changing so quickly. Uh, what are the what are the requirements uh, for and protocols currently for for traveling on board Azamara? What what are the requirements for people? So as of uh, May 1st, Azamara does require that all guests that are eligible and able to be vaccinated to be vaccinated and if they're due for a booster to be boosted. So that's going to be, that is our, one of our policies for, for boarding. You also need to present yourself with a negative COVID test, uh, either an antigen test provided or done within uh, 24 hours prior to arrival at the pier or a PCR test done within 72 hours of arrival to the pier. So that is that. And then as far as masks, all of our crew are, will be wearing masks, but our guests uh, can wear masks optional. We highly recommend that they wear masks, but masks are optional on board. Very good. And my understanding is that for most of the destinations in Africa, there may be uh, some inoculations that you want to consider. Talk to your medical provider. I don't think that any uh, that any of the countries in Africa are currently requiring them. But uh, uh, yellow fever, uh, prophylactic uh, me malaria medications, and things. You might just want to talk with your your medical provider. These aren't aren't necessarily required, but uh, just the you know you want to uh, do the prudent thing when you're traveling halfway around the world and and I know when we did the Amazon River uh, some years ago we did get the yellow fever shot and uh, we also did uh, some anti-malarial medication for that tropical location so uh, anyway I, I don't want to sign off but you have a new to Azamara vessel that has. Uh, just launching and, and uh, uh, just sailing for the first time in 2022, uh, the Azamara Onward. Uh, what can you tell us about that? I'm super excited. Thanks for giving me that chance, Pat, because I, I just flew back from Europe. Uh, I was I had the privilege of welcoming the Azamara Onward into our family. And we had a an inaugural vo or pre-inaugural voyage and we had a naming ceremony May 2nd from uh from monaco so i flew home from nice yesterday and uh so i'm excited because really the ship looks fantastic everything our, our guests are on board right now and uh and enjoying the first voyage one of the neat things that we did with the ship is we added a new venue well actually let me rewind all four of our vessels are exactly the same they're they're part of a collection of vessels that were created for a cruise line called renaissance uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So we operate four identical vessels that are 700 passengers, 400 crew. And these vessels have all been redone. The most recent to be redone, of course, is the Onward as she completed her transformation just uh, a week ago. So we, she was added to our fleet. And today we have three of our four vessels in operation. And by the end of the month, we should have all four vessels in operation again after the pause of service due to COVID. Congratulations now, on that achievement. Yes. We're so excited for the yes. cruise industry. It is, it is awesome. So a few things are little wrinkles to, to, to the Onward different than our other vessels is the Onward introduced a new venue called Atlas Bar. And this is a bar that has these curated, handcrafted cocktails that you can only enjoy up at the Atlas Bar, and um, and then there's also some food items that pair very well with these very special and unique craft cocktails. Now, this is not an included venue; it's only available for our guests that do purchase one of our ultimate beverage packages. But it is available if they also want to just be up there and, and purchase a la carte. Um, we also introduced a new chef's table experience in our specialty restaurant, Aqualina. And those are the two biggest changes. Other than that, uh, for any guest who's been loyal to Azamara watching this, you won't know the difference between the other sisters because some of the friendly faces that you remember on our previous vessels are now on the Onward. And so it's just great. It was really nice to be there, really nice to connect with our Azamara family members. And it was really nice to relish in the, the excitement and history made of launching our fourth ship. 
That is so special. And, and I, I just want to say, I won't mention the name of the cruise line, but years ago when we did, uh, several years ago now, uh, our Amazon River cruise, we were actually on that vessel. I won't mention the name of it, but but in her previous life, we so it is really cool to me to see how, yeah. how she has been recycled and, and uh, Azamara is now made her new again. Of course. So, uh, Lionel, have you got anything on the table with the way of promotions and um, I, uh, anything that, that our clients could take advantage of in the way of specials right now? Yes, of course. So for, for starters, we have our last minute voyages. These are going to be voyages that are traveling within the next three to four, two to four months. These voyages do not allow you to choose your this price point last minute voyages don't let you pick your room but it does give you what they call a run of ship or cruise only guarantee but it allows you to book at a very attractive rate so those are our last minute voyages um that that we have now if you are looking to go a little bit later in this year or maybe next summer we do have our current promotion is bogo 50 that's buy one guest get the second guest half off and $500 onboard credit. Now, that is also our promo for, for that. But if you wanted to plan even further, like into 2024, we have our early booking bonus. And for all of our balconies or higher, we're offering a 20% discount and $300 onboard credit, free Wi-Fi for one device, and an upgraded beverage package. So... And then because, Pat, you invited me to be on this live, anyone watching this who books with you, Dancing Moon Travel, I'm going to extend an, a special offer of an additional $150 to $250 onboard credit on any voyage they choose. So whichever one they pick, as long as they work with you, um, they have uh, two weeks from the live. So today's May 4th. Uh, we, I will, you can hold me accountable to that, Pat. And that's going to be okay. Two two weeks from the day this airs, we're recording oh, early. Yeah, oh, you're leaving. Right, right. so, two, two weeks from the day that it, I'll, yes. I'll figure out what it what it is, and we'll do it two right. weeks from the day date of the that this airs. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And hey, Dancing Moon Travel, we're not gonna you know we're not gonna let you sail without something special. If you book uh, through through Lionel's generous offer with Azamara, any seven night sailing or more. We're going to throw in an extra hundred dollars on board credit from Dancing Moon Travel, plus one of our wonderful exclusive uh, collectible uh, tote bags as well. And Lionel, I, I, I really I know you had so much going on. You've, you've just come back from Europe and so appreciate you're taking the time to talk with us. Uh, as usual, folks, I have a giveaway tonight. Uh, thank you to our live listeners. This is only for you who have tuned in live. Uh, and tonight's prize is something really cool. I have a Sailor Jane watch and keychain set here. And it, this is a really cool, it's a very attractive watch. And, and it would be perfect for you sailing with Azamara or any of your cruises that you love. So uh, just enter the word, I want, I want a phrase tonight, Azamara, Africa. And, and uh, Lionel, just you, you have actually have some room available. We were looking at that March 2023 itinerary. You have a little room available left on yes. that cruise, right? Yes, we're down to uh, a handful of verandas. We do have insides and ocean views. But no worries. If you like to travel in a suite, we could plan uh, a voyage very similar to this one in 24. Pat will be more than happy to, and Dancing Moon Travel will be very happy to help you right. with the future one. But yes, this particular one has done quite well because it's a very unique itinerary, which is probably why you you picked it for, for exactly. our Exactly. Exactly. I thought, what a way for, for the people who are well-traveled to take that road less traveled and combine it with the pre and post. It's amazing. So, folks, there you have it. Azamara does Africa like no one else. So, book now for, for March 2022, 2023 or uh, beyond into 2024. Take advantage of these exclusive offers right now. And uh, 
Finally, mark your calendars for next week. We're going to be uh, welcoming Avalon uh, River Cruises and talking about an Egypt River Cruise. Egypt is on the African continent after all. So, folks, thank you for tuning in. Thank you again, Lionel. We so appreciate your time. And this is an amazing, amazing itinerary. Can't wait to book it for some of our Dancing Moon clients. Thanks, everybody, and see you next week. Thanks again.